Hi everyone, welcome back to A View On, Lonza's podcast on the latest science and trends shaping the future of pharmaceutical manufacturing. Today's episode dives into a technology that might sound like it's taken directly from the Matrix. We're talking about capsules, not the blue or red kind that Neo had to choose from, but ones that one day might replace painful injections. While effective and widespread, injections posed a significant challenge. For many patients, getting an injection severely impacts their quality of life, especially if they need to get them regularly or even multiple times a day. Imagine if you could swap the needle for a capsule, just one spring-loaded pill delivering the dose to your stomach lining, as effective as a subcutaneous injection. How amazing would that be? No extra visits to the hospital, no more insulin injections or vaccine jabs, just one pill to swallow. Et voila. It's really kind of giving that flexibility so the patient has the possibility of taking the medication where and when they want it and the, in the way they want it. To help us unpack how this technology works and why it matters, we are joined today by Karsten Lindhardt, the CEO of BioGrail, which is a company developing an oral device for delivering therapeutics that would otherwise need to be injected. Get ready to explore how their groundbreaking alternative drug delivery system could revolutionize patient care globally. Stay tuned for the next 20 minutes of A View On, brought to you by Lonza. So thank you, Karsten, for joining this podcast. I'm really excited to talk to you about a really interesting topic of smart capsules. But I think before we can actually start talking about it, um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your current position? Absolutely happy and happy to join. Uh, first of all, my name is Karsten Linhardt. I'm the CEO of Bywell. I have a history in, in pharma companies. Uh, earlier I've been in Novo Nordisk, but then also 20 years in, in biotech. And uh, and more recently, I was the chief scientific officer of a company called Ecolab, where we made the world's first injection molded uh, tablet to be approved by the FDA. We're now using the same manufacturing technology at Biogrill to produce our Beyond technology. So what is a smart capsule? It's actually not a term that we use at Biogrill for describing our technology, but the general understanding of smart capsules is a capsule that can do more than just a capsule. Somehow it's uh, a capsule that has more, um, more effect than just what's visually you can see from a standard capsule. And, um, and that's definitely something that will fall under what our technology can do as well. So uh, we're definitely in that uh, umbrella of technologies, but there's very different smart capsules that can do very different things. So it's a broad description of these various types of, of capsule with different features. So do I understand correctly that it would be a capsule that it's not just a delivery vehicle for its cargo, but has a function, like a, a mechanical function or something like that? It has a function that is different than just swallowing a capsule. You know, for example, in obesity, where it's used to expand in the stomach and thereby uh, you're, you're getting less hungry. So that's one type of smart capsule. Our delivery system has a, a device element into the capsule that facilitates the absorption of uh, compounds that otherwise need to be injected. How does this technology differ from a standard capsule we are already familiar with? The patients with our technology... What they experience is a capsule like any other capsule that you would swallow. Uh, the special thing is that we have a device element that fits into that capsule. When the capsule is swallowed and it enters into the stomach, the density of the, of the capsule makes sure that it lands on the bottom part of the stomach, what we call the antrum region of the, of the stomach. And then as we have liquid in the lower part of the stomach there, it dissolves the outer capsule and that releases a spring-loaded mechanism in the device inside that then inserts an insertion element into the stomach tissue, delivering the actual drug in the, in the tissue. Instead of just dumping it in their stomach or, or small intestine, it, it uh, delivers into the stomach wall 
and thereby you can get a very, very high efficiency of their active substance that you cannot get with typical oral, oral dosing. Oh, wow. So it actually has a mechanical element that springs into action. <laughs> and this mechanism actually then delivers the therapy directly into the lining of the stomach, making it uh, as effective as a jab. So the efficiency we can get or what we call the bioavailability of the compound is similar to what we can obtain with subcutaneous injection, which is really kind of fantastic and really been something that their pharmaceutical world has been trying to achieve for, for many, many years and spend a lot of their money and, and, and effort into. And that's also the background for our name. BioGrail has really been the holy grail of biologics delivery or drug delivery to find solutions to deliver peptides and proteins orally. That's fantastic. And I love the play on the name. It's really, really brilliant. So it's really like an injection that goes into your stomach, right? Instead of the arm or instead of your vein. Is the reason for this the fact that you need to locally deliver the cargo? Or is this also helping, for instance, patients that are scared of needles? It really just inserts in the surface of the, the stomach. So in the wall, it doesn't penetrate the wall. It just inserts into, into the wall. And there, you have no sensory nerves in the entire GI tract. So you don't feel anything. It definitely helps people with, that's afraid of needles because anything you need to consider as a patient is that you need to be able to swallow a capsule. And then everything just happens by itself from there. The insertion element we're, we're using is something that's dissolvable in the tissue. So it kind of goes away very, very fast and then distributes the active substance that is embedded into that insertion element. So when that dissolves in the tissue, it, it at the same time releases the active substance that then distributes out into the bloodstream and get uh, out into their general circulation. Great discussion so far. BioGrail's innovative capsule-based technology called Beyond contains a device element that, once swallowed, settles itself into the stomach wall and activates a spring-loaded mechanism to deliver an insertion element. It's basically like a bee stinger. This enables the effective delivery of biologics with bioavailability comparable to subcutaneous injections, offering a needle-free patient-friendly alternative. Is your solution compatible with any other modalities? Could this be also live biotherapeutic products? Could it be small molecules? It can. I think the reason we focus on biologics is because that is typically known as something that you could never absorb through sort of standard oral dosage forms. So they need to be injected. So it's really a platform that has a broad applicability for uh, active substances then that typically would need to be injected today. So therefore, you know, create a, 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 a big benefit to the patients not having to inject themselves. It's not a technology that would replace all injections in the world. That's not even what we are going for. It's really to give patients a possibility to select what is best for them in a given setting. So uh, you have the flexibility uh, that many patients also ask for in order to improve the general treatment. And we, we sincerely believe that it's not just a play of pure convenience, but it's also something that plays into people's uh, compliance, which is a big issue that people actually take their medicines the way they're supposed to. That's a fantastic point you're making. And I think it's not only about the fear itself of needles, right, but also about convenience. If I were a patient that needed to take injections of something on a regular basis, it often means that I can't just do it myself with a pre-filled syringe, for instance. I may have to go to my healthcare provider, need to take time off, need to go to the hospital. If this could be replaced by an easy-to-swallow capsule that's Fantastic. On the topic, actually, what's the size of the capsule? Yeah, the size of the capsule we work on now is what we call double zero size. And people typically don't know these, these uh, size descriptions. So we typically use Panadil or Tylenol. So that's the size that we are, we're working on. But 
We have actually also shown in, 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 in some earlier studies, uh, that we can decrease the size even further, miniaturization of that to what we call a single zero. And the reason we found that to be important is that if you want to move into the pediatric segment, so being able to miniaturize even further could really improve the convenience also for the smaller part of the population where that could be important. We have been very focused on in our development uh, of products is really making sure that once we are getting into man with this technology, then we also have something that's commercially viable and it's not just a concept, but we are really looking to get products out there. And, and that's where maybe our technology and our strategic approach is a little differentiated to other similar technologies in this space. I'm still going back to how this is applied. Uh, I also have dogs. So, of course, my next question is going to be whether you are considering also expanding this to animal health. Because getting a dog to swallow a pill is much easier than administering a shot. Absolutely. The veterinary section is a big area of interest. I also know that horses definitely don't like injections either. So, what we're trying to achieve here is really enabling a new way of delivering biologics, peptides, and proteins, which can be used broadly. We are, just to make that clear, we are focusing on man first. Now I'd like to take a step back and talk about the technology itself. Could you explain the name for us? So it's spelled B-I-O-N-D-D. What does it stand for? Beyond is coming from biologic and then interval uh, uh, oral. So that's a bio interval oral. The N is needle free and then DD is drug delivery. So that's where it comes from. And we pronounce it beyond. I know that when, when you are sort of English speaking, you, people will say beyond, uh, but, but we, we use it beyond because we think that's about breaking boundaries and really kind of getting outside. It's also kind of a little bit of a association to this penetration into the mucosa and getting, getting kind of the boundaries of what you can achieve with, with biologics molecules. So it kind of hits many different associations I would like. Karsten, you mentioned earlier that the device that inserts itself into the stomach lining can also dissolve itself. How does this work? What is the device made of? We're using polymers, sort of standard polymers that is used in the pharmaceutical industries. So it's biodegradable. One of the key things for us was to make sure that we are also having something that's environmental friendly. Uh, another issue of injections is, is these disposable, disposable needles. And that's actually a big environmental problem. And I think if you have a projection of what is needed in 2030, I think there, the amount of needles that we use can go around the, the world 20 times. Uh, what is used in a year. So it's, it's a lot of uh, stainless steel metal and uh, that is used. And then there is the whole environmental side of that, but there's also the health personnel having to deal with these needles with risk of needle injuries. So back in the day when I was still working in the lab, I used to work with pre-filled syringes a little bit, and we were determining ways how to make them the safest, right? Uh, what was really interesting about that platform was also that Every drug, every biologic drug needed a special formulation development for each syringe, for each size of the needle to keep the API stable and to deliver it safely and at the right dose to the patient. And this makes me think, right, uh, do your technologies or your capsules need a special formulation of the biologic that is then put inside? I really appreciate that question because that's one of the beauties of the technology that we have here is that the, the spike that we are doing is made of a polymer that is heated briefly and then we put the API in and then it's cooled and then it's captured into this polymer, meaning that you have what we call a solid solution. So it's bound into a polymer which stabilizes the molecule because there's no, there's no water present. I have to ask, is that stable? Because melting a polymer requires high temperatures, right? We've shown now for numerous molecules, we have actually not seen that to be an issue. First of all, it's a, it's a very short period of time that we are doing the melt and the, and the heating. And the polymers we use seem to stabilize even relatively large biological molecules. So that process seems to be very robust and can deal with 
all the molecules we've tested so far, and that's across antibodies, various peptides and proteins. So, so uh, we feel very comfortable with that, and and it has really sort of some stabilizing properties that will make the formulation part of this much easier because it's a very very simple approach to the formulation. Now we learned more about the technology BioGrail uses to make its innovative delivery devices work. Biodegradable polymers to stabilize and deliver biologics, offering both convenience for patients and environmental benefits by potentially replacing common injections. The technology also has potential applications in pediatric and veterinary medicine and can simplify drug formulations. Kastan, what does the future hold for this technology and for your company? I think that the, the great step is really kind of getting a solution out to patients that they can use. We really make sure that we're not, we're not just building a technology for one product. We are building this technology for endless number of patients. And, you know, if this could be out uh, for them, it really has an appeal. And, and they like the idea of having this flexibility because sometimes you may prefer the injections at other times you, when you are traveling somewhere and you are out in a bigger group, then you may find it easier to swallow a capsule because one of the things that we also get a feedback is that people feel more stigmatized when they have to inject themselves. They don't really like to do this in a bigger forum because they will, they will look more sick if they take an injection compared to taking a capsule because people are used to see people taking capsule tablets when they have a headache or anything. So also from that perspective, it brings a better possibility to, to be social when you're taking your medication. It's really kind of giving that flexibility so the patient has the possibility of taking the medication where and when they want it and the, in the way they want it. I absolutely love this. You know, having done IVF myself, I had to once inject myself on a train even, and I would have much rather preferred to be able to just take pop a capsule or something like that. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, maybe one last question before we finish. Uh, does it make sense to ask about what indications you would prefer to, to target with your technology or would this then depend on companies you would partner with? It makes a lot of sense. As I already said about the platform, uh, it also has an appeal to many different indications. Some of the obvious ones, diabetes, obesity, the whole GLP-1 era here is, is huge, right? And, and, you know, just think about really having very effective oral dust form could be great, right? Uh, and then there's also multi-immune diseases or vaccines. I think you're, you're hitting the right point. It, it is related to the partnership where we're doing, but I also want to mention that we are also at the same time, also building an internal portfolio of compounds that we find really interesting and, and with an interesting potential that we then drive ourselves forward. Uh, into into clinical development. So yes, uh, indication and disease areas and treatment is definitely something that we consider very much in, in our work, but sort of the foundation for it all is that we have a platform technology that can support all of these areas. Wow, thank you. I really, really enjoy this conversation. Thanks for your insights and for spending time with us. I just also want to say thank you and Appreciate uh, being able to speak to this, one of my favorite topics. And that's really what we what we hope for the future and, and really appreciate also the collaboration we have had with uh, with Lancer and others in relation to, uh, to capital technologies. It's great to see that so many good companies also taking really can be part of see this vision and support that part of the travel. I really feel uh, we are we are at a good spot and um, and and really appreciate their collaboration. Thanks for listening to a view on smart capsules with BioGrail's Carsten Lindhardt. Join us next time as we explore microbial manufacturing of biologics using yeast cells. If you cannot wait, head over to lonza.com forward slash a dash view dash on to listen to our previous episodes. Subscribe to never miss an episode, and you can also access additional materials and interviewee info. Bye for now.